Thank you, ladies, for sharing your wonderful gift of music this morning. The epistle today is from 1 John chapter 3. <coughs> By this we know love, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brothers. But if anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? Little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and in truth. By this we shall know that we are of the truth and reassure our heart before him. For whenever our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and he knows everything. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence before God. And whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep, keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we believe in the, the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. Whoever keeps his commandment abides in him, and he in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the spirit whom he has given us. This is the word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is not who he who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This charge I have received from my Father. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Our service continues now with our sermon hymn, hymn number 709. Please be seated.
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text is taken from our first reading, Acts chapter 4, verses 1 through 12. It's read a few moments ago, dear fellow redeemed in Christ. One day, a shepherd was looking after his sheep alongside a deserted road when suddenly a brand new Porsche screeched to a halt. The driver, a man dressed in an, a fine Armani suit with Soretti shoes and Ray-Ban sunglasses, Tag Heuer wristwatch and a Pierre Cardin tie, climbs out and he says to this shepherd, if I can tell you how many sheep you have, Will you give me one of them? The shepherd looks at the young man, and then he looks back at his flock grazing in the field. Okay, he replies hesitantly. Immediately, the confident young man whips open his laptop, and he connects to his mobile hotspot. He enters a NASA Webster and scans the ground using his GPS, opening his database with 60 Excel tables filled with logarithms and pivot uh, tables. He begins to print out a 150-page report on his high-tech mini printer. He then turns to the shepherd and he says, you have exactly 1,586 sheep. Rather surprised, the shepherd replies, that's right. Go ahead, have your sheep. With a sense of pride, this young man grabs, one of his, one of, grabs an animal and he stuffs it in the back of his Porsche. Just as he's about to drive off, the shepherd asks him, Sir, if I guess your profession, will you return my animal to me? Thinking he has nothing to lose, the young man answers, Sure, why not? The shepherd pauses for a moment, studying the man up and down. And then he says, let me guess, you're an IT consultant. Stunned, the young man says, how did you know? The shepherd replies, very simple. First, you came here without being called. Second, you charged me a fee to tell me something I already knew. And third, you do not understand my business. Now, please, can I have my dog back? Brothers and sisters in Christ, today is Good Shepherd Sunday. It's an opportunity for us to pause and to reflect on what it means to belong to a Savior who is both mighty and merciful. A Savior who perfectly projects both law and gospel. Such might in conjunction with such mercy, forms an emboldening impetus for Christian life and witness. We see a prime example of it in our text for today from Acts chapter 4. Here we see transformed disciples who, come what may, will not be deterred in proclaiming Jesus Christ alone. You know, every time I read this text, I'm amazed. I'm amazed at the intestinal fortitude of Peter when he stands before the Jewish leaders and he says what he says. You see, they had commanded the apostles to stop talking about Jesus Christ and His resurrection. Think about that for a moment. These were the same leaders 
who had Jesus arrested. The same leaders who had Jesus beaten to a pulp. The same leaders who coaxed a Roman governor to execute our Lord. They could have easily done the same to Peter and John and the other apostles. Now, St. Luke, he's the author of this book, he does say an interesting quote. He says, many who heard the message believed. And the number of men grew to about 5,000. Perhaps that may have tamed the Jewish leader's response to Peter and John. The number of men who believed grew to 5,000. That number does not include women and children. And so conservatively, you can say that the estimate of people who believed in Jerusalem was probably closer to 10,000. That's about one-sixth of the population of the city of Jerusalem at that time. And so the Jewish leaders find themselves in a quandary. They don't want more people listening to the apostles and turning to Jesus Christ in faith. But they are also afraid that if they cause a big ruckus, that the other believers, numbering in the thousands, might cause an uprising. And so they were walking on very thin ice, so to speak. And so, not to cause such a big scene, the leaders brought in Peter and John, and they begin to question them. They question them not about Jesus Christ, not about the resurrection, but they question them about something that had happened in the city of Jerusalem. A miracle. A miracle which involved a beggar who was healed even though he had been crippled from birth. By what power or name did you do this? They asked Peter and John. Now, if you read Peter's response, it's not the exact words I'm going to say here, but you, you can understand this is pretty much what Peter was saying. He simply says Jesus did this. Christ alone did this. We are emissaries of him. Only Jesus can heal body and soul. And then Peter adds something to his answer, something that he wants these Jewish leaders to hear. He is the stone you builders rejected, Peter says, which has now become the capstone. And salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. Christ alone. There is no other name given to men by which we must be saved. Christ alone. There are a lot of people... A lot of great people in this world, and with a lot of great names. Abraham, Moses, David, even Peter and Paul, John. You can throw in Luther in that mix. You can throw in Lincoln, your mom, your dad. Yet not a single one of these names has the power to rescue you from sin, death, and hell. Of the estimated 60 to 80 billion people who have ever lived on this planet since its creation, only one 
only one can rescue you. Only one can destroy sin, death, and the devil. Only one can win your salvation. Christ alone. No amount of good we could ever do could ever make up for the debt we owe. Only one could pay that debt. Only Jesus Christ and Him alone. Peter and John, they knew that. And that's why they were willing to die for it. That's why they were willing to die for Him. Even in front of the Sanhedrin, the religious leaders who hated them, who hated their message, who helped crucify Jesus, even they would not stop these disciples from proclaiming Jesus Christ alone. Folks, when it comes to our salvation, there is no plan B. There is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. No politician, no governmental system, no king, no queen, no guru, no TV evangelist, no current pastor nor former pastor could ever win your salvation. Only Jesus. One Google search will tell you that there are all kinds of beliefs out there, all kinds of religions. You can pick whatever you want. Yet when you get down to it, there are really only two religions. There's religion A, which says that you must do something for your salvation, and then there's religion B, which says Jesus Christ alone. Religion A says, I can do enough good to earn heaven. If only I do X, Y, Z, then I will be saved. And religion B, only Jesus did enough good and in love takes me to be with him forever in heaven. There is no other choice. You're either saved by your own works, by your own doing, or you're saved by grace. When you boil it all down, there's only two religions, A or B. The Holy Spirit, by His grace, has convinced you that religion B, which we call Christianity, Pure Christianity, biblical Christianity, is true. And that's good. Because, you see, our eternity depends upon Jesus Christ. It doesn't depend upon us. I know if my salvation depended upon me, I'm liable to screw it up. Because I'm not perfect. I'll be the first to admit that. I am not perfect. But I have a Savior who is. My salvation depends upon Jesus Christ, my perfect Savior, who has never failed, not once. And so we can be confident. Trusting in Jesus, we can be confident that we will live forever. We can be confident that just as Christ was raised from the dead, so too will we be raised from the dead, and so will our loved ones who trusted in Jesus Christ be raised from the dead for all eternity. That's our confidence. Because Jesus is perfect, and He has already done it. 
He has already accomplished it. What did he say from his cross? It is finished. It's finished. It's done. He has earned salvation for you and for me and for all who have died in faith. We are in good hands. Our eternity is secured. He is the cornerstone. He is the solid rock on which we stand. Why? To quote the hymn, because all other ground is what? Sinking sand. God, help us to tell others in every way we can through our words, through our actions, through our offerings. God, help us tell others this wonderful and simple truth. Jesus Christ alone. For there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. Amen. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Our service continues now as we with one voice make confession of our Christian faith through the words of the Nicene Creed printed on the back cover of your hymnal. Please stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our service continues now with the gathering of our tithes and our offerings and the sharing of peace.